All right, let's start with 5G now. It's a conspiracy bug. It's spreading quite hard and fast across the globe, irrespective of the color of skin, country, race, or age. Anonymous sources uh, seem to have spread fear, and well, there's one popular source, and propagated apocalyptic ideas uh, about the dangers of 5G. But what is the real story about the 5G network? The president of the Association of Telecoms Companies in Nigeria, Mr. Olushola Teniola, is here to tell us all we need to know. Uh, good morning, sir, and welcome to the uh, Global Business Report. So, uh, uh, Mr. Tenniel, can you uh, help us set the record straight? Because we got a tweet from uh, a senator, um, Dino Melaye, which has been floating around over the weekend, and a number of responses talking about uh, 5G being evil, possibly spreading the COVID-19 disease. Uh, can, you, can you help set the record straight? Is, is 5G evil? Does it cause the uh, disease? <laughs> you can help us out there. Uh, good morning to you and your viewers. And... Uh... To the listeners, thank you for giving us this opportunity to clarify certain issues surrounding 5G and very topical uh, trends that uh, are making the rounds and have gone viral. Uh, the simple answer to your question is that 5G is not evil. 5G is a, another generation of other generations of technology that is worldwide renowned and is, has been deployed globally. Uh, where we have more than billions of devices that exceeds the population on this earth. We currently have more than 6.8 billion devices that depend on this technology, and 5G is just the next iteration. So yes, 5G is not evil. Uh, what I can tell you is that 5G does a lot of good, uh, and also 4G in the case of Nigeria, uh, because that's the country where uh, the trend has been quite... Uh, tremendous in terms of spreading fear, uh, we only have 37% 4G deployment. Uh, the broadband plan, that's the national broadband plan that was launched by the president last year in Abuja, uh, stated from 2020 to 2025 that we want to increase the deployment of 4G technology to every, every local government authority in Nigeria, which will represent 90% coverage by the end of 2025 and therefore translates to broadband penetration, that's people penetration, uh, by 70% by 2025. So until we get there, 5G is an issue. Why? Because 5G isn't present in Nigeria as we speak. All right, thank you for that. Now, um, I, I want to get to the response uh, from uh, the Minister of Communications and the Digital Economy, Dr. Uh, Isa uh, uh, Pantami. He put out a, uh, the ministry put out a press release uh, starting, stating, of course, that they had heard some reports of the health hazards of 5G, and he wanted to state for the record that no licenses have been issued to any telecoms companies. Were you satisfied with his response? Because I, I state this because he was at the 5G demo that took place in Abuja in November of uh, last year. Uh, it was hosted by, by, by MTN. He stated in his press release that uh, there was a study that had been conducted by his ministry and other outside parties, and that's still being uh, conducted. And upon conclusions, he will release um, a statement about that. Uh, seeing as he has a PhD, the, the science is already out there with regards to 5G. Was his response satisfactory? Because some have said he should have just come out and stamped his authority and said, this isn't factual, this is just you know, fake news. So what's your take? Before I come on to that uh, particular question, let me put things into context. Uh, 5G as a technology is rolled out to 378 cities around the world. Uh, the first deployment, I believe, was in the second half of... Uh, last year, 2019, uh, just before certain events. And before then, there have been various studies around 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and now 5G, and other complementary technologies like Wi-Fi, WiMAX. These are technologies that demonstrate high speeds on radio frequencies. So the World Health Organization and other research bodies have not found any correlation in between health issues in human beings and these technologies that, are be de that have been deployed. So 5G itself isn't a hazard to any health. The minister's statement was correct. And the minister, in his, in his position as a representative of the government, has to be cautious. 
as you said earlier in your previous question, that there had been fear uh, sown into citizens of Nigeria, and rightly so, because obviously social media is very powerful. It is based on the internet. It is based on access technology that we take for granted, which is the mobile phone. And it, over the history of the mobile device, there's always been this uh, attempt by certain bodies in the world to try and link radiation with the evolving technology. There has not been any empirical evidence or proof to substantiate those claims. These are opportunistic people who are out there to spread scaremongery, and the minister's statement is apt and correct at this point in time, because clearly there isn't any 5G commercially available in Nigeria. So that's the, the point they're making right now. He further stated that there'll be further studies as the launch of 5G, which will come to Nigeria uh, within the time frame that they deem fit for the citizens uh, to have to adopt this technology after careful studies with the industry, academics, and other civic societies have put in their uh, expert opinions into this matter. All right, thank you for that. All right, uh, moving away from 5G, but still sticking with telecoms, I want to ask you about right-of-way charges. The minister, so we'll stick with him, uh, back in January, uh, he was complaining about the fact that certain states within uh, the country were hiking right-of-way fees on uh, tel telco companies, which are, you know, of course, part of your association. So um, he was, you know, talking about the fact that some of them needed to, to bring them down. But then the argument from the state side is that there's, there's a revenue crunch in the country, so they need to raise internally generated revenue one way or the other. Can you speak to how rights of way charges are affecting, uh, you know, what telcos are trying to do with regards to spreading broadband and other services across the country? Question. Um, we also have to realize that the minister, Honorable Minister has also tried to address the issue of critical national infrastructure. So the, there are two real big elephants in our ability to roll out much needed infrastructure for the deployment of uh, technology that's required to connect uh, those that are in the rural areas of this country. Rights of ways is one form of obstacle or hurdle to achieving that. As you know, uh, we have various thousands of kilometers of fiber across the country. We are yet to attain the goals that NCC would like to achieve, which is 120,000 kilometers of fiber by the end of 2025. And in order to do that, we have to ensure that the cost of rolling out is normalized. And what do I mean by that? Essentially, that investments are made and that taxes do not become impunitive to those investments. Well, hiking of rights of ways against much needed infrastructure like optic lane of optic fibers is an impediment to the penetration of broadband, which I stated previously, we are trying to attain a 70% broadband penetration by 2025, for what is currently just under 38%. So if we're not able to harmonize and uh, uh, normalize the fees paid, which if we go back to previous ministers who have uh, run uh, the, the, the commission and also, sorry, the institution, then we would understand that since 2012, we've tried to uh, attempt to address this issue of having a nominal fee of 145 naira per linear meter. This is what is deemed to be reasonable. And if we are able to convince the state governments that this much needed infrastructure is important to the development of the country and to the future of the youth, then 145 naira is 145 naira per linear meter and nothing more. What we need to do is to still have continuous dialogue with the state governors, and the minister has done that, has kick-started that. In the Nigerian broadband plan of 2020 and to 2025, we have identified that that is one of the priority uh, uh, initiatives that we have to undertake to ensure that the reality of achieving uh, broadband deployment to the 774 local government authorities achieved uh, by 2025. All right, fantastic. All right, uh, Mr. Tenney, I've only got a couple of minutes. I want to quickly ask you about the uh, COVID-19, the lockdown. Some have said that telecos should reduce data costs uh, on folks in Nigeria since they're all stuck, most of them, all of them are stuck at home. Uh, what's your take on that, if you can, in about a minute and a half? Thank you very much. Um, I think that our, our members 
uh, ATCON should be really appreciated. Uh, there have been uh, palliatives done by various uh, members. I won't mention their names, but uh, you can see it in the media that uh, there's been uh, uh, overtures in terms of SMS, uh, distribution to civic centers and the medical uh, centers, especially NCDC, in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, we are continuously looking to raise funds to assist them in this fight and pandemic. We also have to balance it against the infrastructure needs. Uh, we are very cognizant of the fact that congestion on our networks is a reality. We have to balance the fact that if we uh, do drop prices or we offer free freebies on data, then it might impact the networks. And we are very cognizant that of the fact that we need to increase capacity and our members are doing everything to ensure that our networks are operating during this period of lockdown. All right. Uh, President of the Association of Telecoms Companies, Atcon, Mr. Olushola Teniola, thank you so much for joining us on the Global Business Report.